We look in amazement at the processes underway in the countries, which have been traditionally looked at as the standard bearers of progress. Of course, the social and cultural shocks that are taking place in the United States and the Western Europe are none of our business. We are keeping out of this. Some people in the West believe that an aggressive elimination of entire pages from their own history, reverse discrimination against the majority of the interests of a minority and the demand to give up the traditional notions of mother, father, family, and even gender. They believe that all of these are the mileposts on the path towards social renewal. The advocates of so-called social progress believe they are introducing humanity to some kind of a new and better consciousness. Godspeed, hoist the flags as we say, go right ahead. The only thing that I want to say now is that their prescriptions are not new at all. It may come as a surprise to some people, but Russia has been there already. After the 1917 revolution, the Bolsheviks, relying on the dogmas of Marx and Engels, also said that they would change existing ways and customs. And not just political and economic ones, but the very notion of human morality and the foundations of a healthy society. The destruction of age-old values, religion and relations between people, up to and including the total rejection of family. We had that too. Encouragement to informed on loved ones. All this was proclaimed progress and, by the way, was widely supported around the world back then and was quite fashionable, same as today. The fight for equality and against discrimination has turned into aggressive dogmatism bordering on absurdity. When the works of the great authors of the past, such as Shakespeare, are no longer taught at schools or university because their ideas are believed to be backward, the classics are declared backward and ignorant of the importance of gender or race. In Hollywood, memos are distributed about the proper storytelling and how many characters of what color or gender should be in a movie. This is even worse than the agitprop department of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. Countering acts of racism is a necessary and noble cause, but the new cancel culture has turned it into reverse discrimination, that is, reverse racism. The obsessive emphasis on race is further dividing people when the real fighters for civil rights dreamed precisely about erasing differences and refusing to divide people by skin color. I specifically asked my colleagues to find the following quote from Martin Luther King. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by their character. This is the true value. However, things are turning out differently there. By the way, the absolute majority of Russian people do not think that the color of a person's skin or their gender is an important matter. Each of us is a human being. That is what matters. In a number of Western countries, the debate over men's and women's rights has turned into a perfect phantasmagoria. Zealots of these new approaches even go so far as to want to abolish these concepts altogether. Anyone who dares mention that men and women actually exist, which is a biological fact, risk being ostracized. Parent number one and parent number two, birthing parent instead of mother and human milk, replacing breast milk, because it might upset the people who are unsure about their own gender. I repeat, this is nothing new. In the 1920s, the so-called Soviet Koltertriegers also invented some new speak, believing they were creating a new consciousness and changing values that way. Not to mention some truly monstrous things when children are taught from an early age that a boy can easily become a girl and vice versa. That is, 
The teachers actually impose on them a choice we all supposedly have. They do so while shutting the parents out of the process and forcing the child to make decisions that can upend their entire life. They do not even bother to consult with the child's psychologist. Is a child at this age even capable of making a decision of this kind? Calling a spade a spade, this verges on a crime against humanity, and it's being done in the name and under the banner of progress. Well, if someone likes this, let them do it. I've already mentioned that, in shaping our approaches, we will be guided by a healthy conservatism. That was a few years ago, when passions on the international arena were not yet running as high as they are now. Although, of course, we can say that clouds were gathering even then. Now, when the world is going through a structural disruption, the importance of reasonable conservatism as the foundation for a political course has skyrocketed, precisely because of the multiplying risks and dangers and the fragility of the reality around us. President Vladimir Putin says that woke ideology is destroying Western civilization, condemning far-left progressivism, and compared it to Russia's darkest days during the 1917 Bolshevik Communist Revolution, in which the Soviets seized the means of production and overthrew the government. Most Western, and especially American, students are not taught about the Marxist tactics that ushered in communism and the mass death toll that inevitably comes with it. Instead, they're taught critical race theory, which is Afrocentric propaganda that is not about bringing about equality, but rather demonizing and vilifying one demographic in an effort to eradicate an existing power structure and bring about its collapse. Family values, religion, race, gender, morality, and nationalism is described as a threat 